Hi there. This is video number four for chapter two. So last time we set up the mathematical model, and now we're looking at、um, solutions for this, following the technique we learned, the graphic solutions. So we will graph the feasible region for all the constraints. So let's list the constraints here. We have、um, four of them. Beyond the one that x y are positive, which restrict our solution to the first quadrant, we have three constraints, each coming from a nutrient. So let's look at nutrient A. It requires three x plus two y to be bigger than sixty. So in the previous chapter, we have already taken an example to show. How to graph it? So let's go ahead and do that. So in the first quadrant, we will draw the border, which is three x plus two y equals sixty. That gives us this straight line. We can find the two intercepts. So this is the border of the region, and the part above it, which is shaded here. Mm, that will be the region that satisfies the constraint. And now, for the second nutrients,、um, we carry out in a similar way. Seven、um, x plus two y equal eighty four. Give us this straight line、um, that's colored red, and the region above this line that's shaded red. That's the region that satisfies. The constraint for nutrients B, and finally、um, for nutrients C, here's our constraint. And in the first quadrant, we locate the two intercepts for this equation with the equal sign, and we connect it, which is the border, this dark blue, and the area above it, shaded in light blue, is the region where this constraint is satisfied. Okay, so、um, take a look at these three regions. We now see that in this case, we'll put them together. We'll see that these three border the lines will actually intersect with each other. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, let's put the three constraints, actually the four constraints, together.、Um, in the first quadrant, we. Now draw the border of these three regions, where rep are represented by straight lines. And we know that if we want all the constraints to be satisfied, we will be looking at the region that's above all these three boundaries. And what would that be? Well, that means it has to be above all of them. That is, this area here that's bordered by the red line and the green line and the blue line and above the x y axis. Okay, let's shade that. Now this region is shaded in gray, and、uh, per our definition, we will call this the feasible region. That is, every point in this region, all the constraints are satisfied. Now we make an observation that、um, this region now has、um, straight line as its border, and、uh, it has one and two and three and four corner points, which we call vertices. Let's、um, emphasize them. Okay, so we see the vertices are.、Um, we have four of them. The first one here is the intersection between the red line with the y-axis, and this point is the intersection between the red line and the green line. And we have the equation for them. We can solve those two equations simultaneously and locate this point. And this point is the intersection between the green line and the blue line, where we have the equations, and we can find it as well. 
and the point number four is the x-intercept of the blue line which we already have also okay so let's say we did all this computation and then we can obtain the coordinate of all these points okay um if you did your computation um at the same time um then you will find out that um, this point has coordinate 0, 42. This point, the intersection between these two lines, is 621. And this point, being the intersection of the blue and the green line, is 18 and 3. And this point, the x-intercept of the blue line, is 24. So we label those. Because why? Well, we know these points are possibly of interest to us. The next step is to take a look at the cost function. Here the cost function is uh, 10x plus 4y. So given a constant k, um, this equation will be a straight line with slope negative 2.5 and along the straight line satisfied by this equation, the cost function is constant k. Okay, let's draw some of these lines. So in the xy plane, in the first quadrant, we draw multiple of these lines for different k values, and we see that they are all parallel to each other. And as this parallel line, if you move upward, in the direction where x, y are increasing, we see that the k value increases. That means the cost will increase. Okay, so we actually should all be familiar with this. We had an example like this before. Then the next step is to put this together with the feasible region and look for the optimal point. Okay. Let's do this. We will put the cost function together with the feasible region. And then um, in this graph that we have here. So the gray area is the feasible region. And we have these straight lines with this negative slope. As we move it to the left down direction, the cost function becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And we want to find the point in the feasible region where this cost function is as small as possible. Then you see that this green point, which is one of the corner points, it's a vertex, at right there, the feasible region will touch this line for the, where the cost function takes a constant value and which will be its minimum value. Okay, so now we can conclude that the minimum cost is achieved at the point. So we call the coordinate is x is 6, y is 21. And we can plug these two values into the cost function and compute it. And that will give us 144 cents. So this will be the minimum cost, and it's achieved at the green point. Okay, so translate this back into the original word problem, you would say now. So the best choice for the farmer is to use 6 pounds of feed X and 21 pounds of feed Y, which gives the minimum daily cost of 144 cents. So just put a remark here, we see that the optimal point is now again obtained at a corner point. Okay, so this is your second linear programming problem that you have solved. And uh, we have made of various uh, observations. And uh, in next video, we will have some more discussions.